Hey guys, welcome to another video from Sisters You've Never Had. Woo! Just having a nice Friday night in. We're in each other's bubbles, obviously. And after working on some of the podcast stuff, we are so excited to play yep. this new game that Lisa is introducing to me. So basically, we are playing this new game that my friend Marga got me, which is called We Are Not Really Strangers. Yeah, we're gonna be playing it for the very first time today. Basically, the premise of the game is to really get to know each other and stuff. But obviously, since we already know a lot about each other, this is on 14 plus years of friendship. <laughs> we are probably going to skip through a lot of the early stage questions and kind of go through the end because the way this game is structured is that there are three different stages. The first stage is I believe on perception and just kind of like things that you assume of each other right from just like looking at them and stuff. This is mostly for the stranger stage. The second stage is on connecting and the third stage is on I actually don't know. But anyway, we're probably gonna focus more on the later stages just because mm -hmm. we already know a lot about each other. It's like meant to be played for even people who are strangers. So I feel like this could be like a really good first, second date game if you're so like cute. into that. So essentially thing. you're going deeper and deeper in into like a level of conversation yes. with each category. So like okay. I said, I've literally never played this before in my life and I was just opening up the rule book and I think there are like some components where you write things down there's even like a final card where you like write things to each other. We're just kind of playing and drinking on a Friday <laughs> night. We're probably not gonna do the writing and we're just gonna answer the questions. Sounds good. All right, okay, do you wanna start? Okay. Okay, first of all. Cheers! Cheers. We're already done one drink. Do I look kind? Yes. Explain. You actually do look kind. We had this whole conversation about this and some that people so just look like <laughs> evil. <laughs> I think it depends like, on like the vibe you give off too. Cause like you can just meet someone and have a total like resting bitch face and then yes. the entire time you could think, oh, this person is just not nice at all. But if you're meeting us, yeah. we're like, <laughs> No, but you have like a sweet face. I can look at you and I'm like, she looks so nice. I don't want to like name names, but there are some people who are like, you look evil. <laughs> okay, so do I look kind? Of course. <laughs> you just have like the sweetest face. I can just dying right. because we're just like hyping each other up. Like, <laughs> of course you well, do. Like, on me. It's like compliments that moms would give their sons. Like, yes, you're so handsome. Yes. And me if I had a son for real. <laughs> that actually would be you. Like oh, you're yeah, like that yeah. with your whole family. The most extreme <laughs> compliments. Like my dad was coming down the stairs and I was like, hi beautiful. And Lisa was like, why are you calling your dad that? <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. All right, let's do another card. What do you think I'm most likely to splurge on? Oh my gosh, you would be more likely to splurge on like anything. Designer things for sure. Yes. Because you love your handbags. Yeah. I feel like every other month Lisa is buying a new bag, <laughs> but she thinks long and hard about it. Yeah. You think about your like, big splurges and also cars. I know you just I bought mean, your just first the car, one. Plugging but... in that Tesla that you bought <laughs> that I'm true. proud of oh, for you. Thank you. Um, tech and then you splurge yes, on like tech. tech for sure. Designer goods. Yeah. Like bags. Yeah. I actually do splurge on tech more than I splurge on bags. Like I probably spend more on tech. Yeah, you Maybe. have random like gadgets. I'm very techie, yeah. You for splurging. I think you're like actually very big on splurging on experiences, more specifically Disney. Oh, yeah. And like you also love splurging on your whole family. Everybody. I would say you're the same, but yeah, <laughs> that is totally right. Yeah. We have like unlimited wallets for like our family. family yeah, like, we just, buy a lot. We're of really shit. generous people. Yeah. <laughs> they take advantage of they us. They totally 100%. do. Like, we, we're like sugar sisters to our siblings. Yeah. Yes. And sugar uh, daughters too, like our parents. Oh, 100%. Is this the thing? We're the firstborn. Yeah. And we're firstborn daughters. And we like spend a lot of money so on our family. So basically, we're like the mothers of our younger siblings. <laughs> I wish I had a me. 
Same, dude. <laughs> We're ready to go deeper. Okay. What question are you trying to answer most in your life right now? I guess there's two. It's like, what is my true purpose in life? What should I be really, I really that. focusing mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. in terms of my career journey and stuff like that? And then the other one is, will I actually find a husband like, that I, the I will love? Husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I will love. Like, just to emphasize, mm -hmm. not just any husband, because like, if you just you want a husband- You can just pick one off the street. Exactly. Your true match in exactly. life. Exactly. Like your soulmate if that's even yeah like if we even believe in soulmate exactly or like how much do i have to settle <laughs> I would say, yeah, same thing. Like, what am I meant to do in life? Like, exactly. career-wise, we're meant to be doing something. Like, I want to give back to others. Like, how can I do that? Yeah. Where the fuck is my husband? <laughs> Excuse me if you're yes. watching right now. Where the fuck are you? She's been waiting. Years. Yeah. So if you guys have been listening to the podcast, then you would already know our mentalities. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? Freaking follow our podcast. <laughs> you would know that Teresa has been looking for her husband since, like, day one. Literally since I was born. Fetus. Maybe. <laughs> Sleeping in there, like, where the fuck are you, dude? I'm born to like, what fetus are you in? I mean, <laughs> after my first Disney movie, I must have been like five watching Snow White. I'm ready to be kissed. Yeah, by my future husband. Yeah, I'm not that much in a brush. We're in a different like, phase right now. Looking for love, looking for purpose kind of deal. Yes, <laughs> yes. on both ends. My turn to draw. What is your first love's name <gasps> and the reason oh, you fell in love with him or her? I remember the guy for you. He was <laughs> Grade six. Yeah. Do you remember his name? It's not that common, but it is like a Bible name. Is yours? I hate him, but yes, it oh, is. Yeah. I don't even want to consider him my first love anymore. No, I think he is. I did have like boyfriends in elementary school that I could consider my first love. To. But you weren't in love with them. I think I was. Oh, so you're gonna replace with somebody else, okay. Yes, basically, basically there's this else. guy in elementary school that I liked from like grade five to grade seven. His name was Tony. Okay. I had a big crush on him. Okay. Because we did go out for like two years. Okay, well, you need to answer the second part of the question now, okay. which is the reason you fell in love with him or her. Oh my gosh. Well, was it him in this case? I was really young, grade five, but it was like the Avril Lavigne, the skater scene, and he had like a skateboard, he was skating around looking so cool, and I felt okay. a really young love type of thing. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know what he's doing now? I have no idea what he's doing now. <laughs> I'm not really interested in looking to see what he's up to now anyway, because it yeah. literally was when I was like nine years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, I, I do remember the grade six guy. I know. Wow, we had first loves really young. I know. <laughs> I met him in grade five, his name's, oh my god, I can't believe I'm saying this in public. His name is oh, and okay, do you never remember? mind. I wouldn't have no that you name. thought it was like Judah. Yeah. Oh J Judah. Honestly, like he was definitely my first love. Like there's literally no question. I was in grade five and I had just moved to this new elementary school and he also moved to this new elementary school. I remember I started class. He for some reason started like a few days late. I, I still remember this as though it was yesterday. I just remember when he walked in like never in my life uh, have been hit this hard. And you're 27 almost. <laughs> yeah. I just remember it was like love at first sight for me. I was like oh That's my god who cute. is this man? Kid. Boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. Literally boy because he's 10. We started dating and then he was like my first, all the innocent stuff, like hand holding, my first kiss, walk around the school holding hands, like all the teachers like knew that we were like together. We would always send each other written love, love letters. letters, like be on MSN all the time. I was literally so in love with this man. And then he moved to a private school. Actually, we broke up a little bit before that. It was like due to a misunderstanding or something. We figured out it was a misunderstanding, but then because starting in grade seven, we knew that he was moving we never got back together. I was so devastated because I was the one who caused the breakup because I was the one who never even clarified situation, I think. It took me like three or four years to get over this person and I just remember thinking, I'm never gonna feel this way again. And I don't think I have like in terms of that innocent puppy love where it was just like, like I thought I was like dead. That is your first love. Yes. Like that's yeah. how you feel, experience love for the first time. He was just so well-rounded, like he was good at sports, he was smart, I was just literally like obsessed with him. Have you guys been in touch? No. Interestingly, I he went to the, the story. Yeah, yeah, he went to Western, <laughs> which is the university I went to. And then when we reconnected, we only reconnected one time, he was so different. Very hipster, not who I really recognize. I feel like I've just stayed the same and like elevated who I I was. That was actually like TMI. <laughs> that went deep. Yeah. Into your first love. Okay, let's do this. We're also just on stage two, you guys. 
What's your father's name? Tell me one thing about him. And I must say, you have the cutest dad ever. He's I so actually do. And he's so kind. I think he's just so pure because every time he comes in, he just comes in with just so much love and like respect. Yeah. My dad, like if I ever put him on TikTok, he would be the number one dad where people would comment, protect him at yes, all costs. Yes, for sure. Like, 100%. That's why I keep saying like your dad's so pure. Like yes. your dad is like huh. so innocent. What's your dad's name? So my dad's English name is Jimmy. And the reason why this is so funny is because I dated a guy <laughs> for two years named Jimmy. So it's like. That is so weird. I never knew your dad's name for the last <laughs> I don't know your mom's name. Yeah. Oh my I god. I just call her auntie and, and I call yes. her auntie. It's like the Asian respect thing. Hi auntie. <laughs> yeah. Hi, but okay, what's your dad's Ugh. name? My dad's name is Dave. What? <laughs> is I also said auntie. boyfriend's name. How do we know our mom's name? <laughs> One thing about him, he used to really love riding motorcycles. Like he wishes that oh. he could like ride one right now. And obviously Lisa knows because she's here all the time. For all you guys watching, my dad is like the best cook ever. Oh. Literally makes anything, everything, like from all cuisines. I eat like a queen at home, literally. Yeah, literally <laughs> her dad makes like chef. Okay, well, he, he is also is chef. chef. Even at home, the presentation, the type of food, so it's extra. like... He really puts so much thought into it. Like his love yeah. language is like cooking, presenting you like delicious food. Well, why do you think I'm yeah, here all the, the time? <laughs> <laughs> right? Wait, what time are you having dinner? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna come like right before that. <laughs> Wait, so what's your mom's name? I know that's not part of the question. Oh, yes. Like, okay, my mom's name is Tina. Dave and Tina. That's yes, cute. Yes. Okay, wait, wait. your mom's name? I had no idea. Okay, so her name's Jenny. Oh, wait, I think I know this. So Jimmy yes, and yes. Jenny. JJJ, but like you're an Yes. Ass. So my brother's name's John, Jimmy, Jenny, John, and then there's like the L but, out of nowhere. But why did they name you Lisa and not like Joanne? This was all unintentional because like in Taiwan, you have your obvious like Chinese name, but because English is such a dominant language still in Taiwan, you all like learn English and you all have like English names. They just happen to have those names. And okay. my brother was actually originally named Michael. And then Ooh, before immigrating, okay. I forced my parents to change his name. So you picked... John's name. Yeah, so my brother and I are only one year apart. I could not spell Michael. The A and but the like E, you, like, at the only time. only one year older than him. Yeah, so when did he change his name from Michael to John? When I was six and he was five. And I remember because English was such a big part of Taiwan, like, so even in preschool, I was in English immersion, whatever. And I just remember, like, there was a kid in my class named John, and it was easy for me to spell, and it was, like, short or whatever. Yeah, so I was just like, can we name him something else? And my parents were like, what? And I was like, John or something. Oh my god. And then bam! parents listen to like six year old Lisa. Because like, he could have had a say too. He was just one year younger. I know. Like, Mom and Dad, can I just change my name? <laughs> Sometimes when I think about moments like that and I'm like, wow, oh, I You have so, so power. much power. Literally. Like, literally, yeah. <laughs> with my name, it was, I think someone else actually named me and it was just like a nice name. This wasn't supposed to happen on purpose. I think I played myself because now they all have J's and I'm the only L. What about how you guys came to your names? Do Random, you know, like name book. I picked my brother's name when I was like five. And, and you then, picked Brian? I think so, but I barely remember. I just remember like vaguely looking through a name book and my mom was like, oh, what do you think of these names? Jeanette, I don't remember picking my sister's name. I don't remember picking at all. I think they came up with that on their own. And then Teresa obviously just literally through a name book. I like remember reading that name book when I was like five years old. They gave you guys uncommon Asian yeah, American names. Yeah, I know, I know. Proud of them. I'm proud, yeah. like Teresa, Jeanette. Okay, Brian is a very common Asian name. That's true. I don't have a basic bitch name. I know a lot of Asian brothers. Better than like Tony, like your your first love. What's com so common for like an Asian? Michael. Name? Brandon is common. Michael is common. Tony, Victor. Alex's are common. Alex. But also I would just like to say if my brother was named Brian, I would have also changed that fucking name because what? it sounds nice. As a young kid, I kid you not, I kid you not, because I also had Brian's in my class. I could not tell the difference between a Brian and Brain. <laughs> okay, but you were like, five. Like, no one expected that either. That, but that's why I changed my brother's name oh at that goodness. age. I refuse to be dumb.
We actually spend a lot of time on each question. <laughs> Love it. Describe your perfect day. My perfect day would be sleeping in, having my dad make a delicious brunch. I really like the pierogies that he makes. Pierogies with like sausages on the side. Okay, let like me know when he's making that. Oh my gosh. I will he be makes here. this every Saturday. <laughs> Sometimes Sundays, beautiful weather. It would be like a spring. My dad and I would go biking, would come home. My mom and I would like go to the garden with like my sister and brother. I would like see my friends for like a happy hour at a restaurant or like have a dinner with my friends. That's and so that would be like my perfect day. But is this your perfect day literally if you had to pick? That would be like a common like perfect day. But like if I had to pick, it would be Disneyland with like the love of my life. Like maybe even with my Aww. family, that would be my perfect day. And we'd watch the fireworks at the end of all of it. Fast pass and we could skip the line. <laughs> fast I, like, fast I would have like so a VIP like <laughs> I was just like, if you could pick a perfect day, you're like gonna No, because I'm thinking like my life right now, because like quarantine True. life. So how about yourself? Okay, I so- I wonder how extra you would go. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, I actually answered this question on one of my like muffins on YouTube as well and on Instagram. I literally have ranked my top days of my life. So far, I only have two. Like I only have top two days of my life and both of these days include jumping off of a boat and swimming in the ocean. I don't I don't think it's a coincidence and in both scenarios like there is no guy or whatever so like I feel like that's optional I don't really need mm -hmm. them to have like a perfect day but <laughs> yeah. the one requirement is good company so like family or friends and a boat and a boat that's all I ask for good company boat and alcohol that's all I ask for okay let's move deeper into level three okay what do you admire most about me oh, oh my god okay so I actually <laughs> already told you this so this should not come as a surprise what I admire most about you is your ability to get literally like any job that you set your eye on <laughs> I don't want to say like confrontational skills but you're really good at negotiating this whole like employment process so Teresa's amazing at getting jobs and being on the receiving end but she's also also very good at hiring people and like having an eye for that so if you guys didn't know she is a career coach on the side so go follow her page I will leave a thingy it here quarter life careers <laughs> exactly so go follow her she's also accepting clients this is like the perfect side hustle for her because ever since we were little okay ever since we were little <laughs> she's just been killer at getting jobs and she's always had like the most kick-ass jobs starting at like the age of 13 14 my first resume was copy and paste from hers and I I just like edited the template to like fit me even now as like podcast partners we've hired a couple of people to help with us and she's literally in charge of all of that i do like a lot of the social media but like she's like in charge of all the hiring so that's what that's i so admire sweet. Most for you. Yeah. Well, thank you that's actually a surprise i thought that you would say like oh i admire your like kindness but like it's really <gasps> oh really yes where it's like about my actual talent Yes, That's cool. okay, so that one's like one of her like skills or whatever, but she's extremely family oriented and she's oh my very good at saving. As a huge spender, <laughs> when I see her save, I'm just like, damn. But yeah, like very family oriented, very good at saving. You're too funny. Those are the other two qualities. Okay, thank you. That was so sweet. Oh, come oh, on. Oh my god, we're literally like mothers. <laughs> literally, we're like, you are perfect in every way. And this is what I yeah. love about you. Maybe okay. this should be called mothers you've never had. <laughs> What do I admire most about you? I would say it's your ability to connect to people through your socials, obviously. Bubbly and vibrant personality is just so easy for people to like, Aww. like, connect to, and that really is something that I admire. Your vibrance shows through. I did everyone. not know this. What? Really? Yeah. On top of that, you mentioned like socials and how you take care of socials for like sisters you've never had, but you are so good at all things. Stay on top of all the trends for socials. So Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, literally <laughs> everything social wise, you name it, like Lisa is on top of. And I see you growing as the influencer Aww. that you want to become and I'm so proud of you. Yeah, we're like a really good balance <laughs> of like business partners. We laugh mm -hmm. in the places that we're yeah, like- Yeah, so like I'll take care of like HR, hiring, <laughs> like, HR. and you do like the social- <laughs> Yeah, PR, 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 and there PR. we go, there we go. <laughs> Next okay. question from section three. 
How would you describe me to a stranger? To a stranger, I would be like, meet Lisa. She is my best friend. Aww. She is kind, honest, so much fun to be around, and all in all, a really good and pleasant person. Aw, thank yeah. you. Family oriented, really amazing at socials, and Instagram famous. <laughs> okay, so how I would describe you to a stranger. So fun fact, I actually kind of already did this exercise because I already made a TikTok on selling Teresa, selling her to like help her find a husband because as you guys know from earlier in this video, she is looking for her husband. I was proactive and trying to sell her on TikTok and I thought it would really blow up and like her husband would I did like get DM. some DMs. Really? I did. You I did not did. tell me this. So I it worked. I mean, it didn't it, work, but it didn't have It's not that I wasn't successful, but like they weren't successful candidates. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I already tried selling her. So this is basically the gist of what I said, okay? She has a great job. She is a nice person, basically very well-rounded. She can be like sweet, nice, but she can also be like rowdy, like partying, blah, blah, blah. Hey. And like, yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Really family oriented. The girl next door, but plus like a little bit of spiciness. I would say that's the same with you. <laughs> the niceness of the girl next door. Like, you know, like the, the good manners, get a bit of spunk and like Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Let's do this. What about me most surprised you? See, this is hard because I've known you for 14 plus years. So like, what really surprises me? <gasps> actually, the thing that surprises me most is actually on a podcast episode. In episode <laughs> two, we talk about <laughs> pooing and farting in front of mm -hmm. our significant mm -hmm. other. And the thing that surprised me <laughs> the most, the most, I know okay? what you're going to say. The fact that this girl is all like shy and like whatever in farting in front of her partner and pooing and stuff. You're open, but oh, you're yeah. not like that open. You're not as open as I thought you would be. So the reason why I'm saying this is because when I FaceTime this, Girl, she'll literally change I literally her will. She'll like. <laughs> Okay, for old talk. That's different than farting. You can see me with like my boobs out, like my butt out. Me like actually exerting a fart. That's like okay. I think, I think it's because like in general she's very open about anything. Yeah. Her body. She's open about talking about anything. She'll talk about farts. She'll talk about sex in detail, like mm -hmm. anything. All of a sudden, when it's like <laughs> something natural. Okay, well I give a I give a fair warning. I'll be like, excuse me. Listen to episode two because I feel like the level of comfort <laughs> that I have is where I expected her to be. We try to film the episodes where we don't pre-talk about it because we want you guys to have the most like authentic reactions from us. So that really shocked me because I thought you would be as open. Like I don't want people to see me poo. Like I can be open showing my body, literally like having like a tit out, but like I don't want you to see me take a shit or party. That's something else. Two things that surprised me about you. The first thing is that like you're like really techy and I didn't find that out till oh, like yes. last week, literally. <laughs> I was like, what? I had this mouse and then apparently you can use one mouse, Bluetooth it with like three computers. And I had no idea. I was manually doing it and Lisa taught me how to use one button to change and yeah. like use it through all of my like computers, which is super cool. The other thing that completely like surprised me was that so gross, but you taught me what a Dutch oven. oven. Yes. Dude, I didn't know what that was. Was. So, so Lisa's funny. nastier than I thought because it turns out she farts in front of her significant other like a hundred times a day, fully open. <laughs> listen and to she does two. Dutch ovens. Okay, like listen to episode two because you'll be shook. Like well, you nasty. Yeah. You gross as fuck. <laughs> I was like, you not as gross as I thought you were doing. That was kind of what shocked each other. Okay, should we do one last one? Let's question? do one last one. What is something that you want to do like before you die? Wow, you okay, to, like, love that question. What is something I want to do before I die? I don't have something like, oh, like I want to go skydiving mm -hmm. one time or something like that. Or it could be, even be like a goal that you need to reach. I'll try to do a fun one and mm -hmm. I'll try to do a deep one. So the deep one that I have for myself, and I think I've told you this, is I really want to help my parents with retirement, get them into retirement early mm -hmm. I would love to be able to financially support them in the next few years so that's like and something I, I want totally to do doable. you can totally do that Aww, I believe in you I believe in that's us retired, yeah. Jenny and Jimmy. yes oh. 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 yes yes <laughs> 
so they don't have to like work another day that's honestly like one of my life goals and that's honestly what like keeps me going like every day mm -hmm. I guess the fun thing is I want to increase my travel like I really want to visit every continent like I want to go to Antarctica I literally yeah, want to visit yeah. every continent something travel related for me I was gonna say something similar to you like with supporting the parents but I always wanted to buy them like a brand new house basically lived here most of my life like yes. this house in Vancouver and we've been here so long and I feel like we're not outgrowing it I want to just give them like a brand new place and I will help you decorate oh yes that would be freaking cool I would hire you more. Oh, she's a really <laughs> great <laughs> interior designer by the way check out her like YouTube channel you'll see yeah. help them like pay off their mortgage that's one and then like buy them like a whole ass new house that ties in with like helping them retire too because my parents have worked so hard their whole lives mom would like work multiple jobs same with my dad and I've seen how hard they work like how early they leave the house exactly how they come in yes and that breaks my heart yes like, I even realized at a young age 15 like I would like cry because I'd be like oh my parents are working so hard and I, exactly. I don't want them to work that hard anymore I mean what we're really we're good daughters, daughters. Yeah. we're the best we're daughters what fuck the man fuck? I better have a Dude. fucking daughter like me I think the one realization here is we need Dude, ourselves as we, daughters. Yeah. And my fun thing that I need to do before I pass, it could be parents related or it could be like with a significant other, but I want to do like a big family trip. I want to do multiple of those trips to different countries. Go with like my future spouse and take my parents along Aww. and take them like around different countries, like different islands. Yes. My dad is always watching YouTube videos of like these islands in Vietnam. Oh. He's from there initially yeah. and that's where I've always wanted to take them. Me and like my kids hopefully one day, my spouse Aww. and like my, my parents, my family. So yeah. big family trips. Literally all Teresa wants is a husband. She will <laughs> pop out a child like right now. If the <laughs> husband is here, she will pop <laughs> well, some kids I'm out. young though. I'll wait for you. But she like, oh yeah, that's like another <laughs> goal. But I was thinking like they are like first born daughters and they're best, best friends. Best friends. you never had generation two. <laughs> New life goal. Yes, yes, number three. Yeah. Number three. <laughs> number three goal. Number three. Goal. Wow, that was like our first time playing this game. Thank you, Marga, for getting this for me. <laughs> but yeah, you guys should definitely check out this game. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode or this video. Yeah, this on video. Our we had so much fun doing it. Definitely check us out on our Instagram yeah. and our YouTube channel. And what else we got? Our podcast. Our <laughs> last podcast. You forgot to mention the one thing that is like what we're trying to do. Our podcast. It is available on the following platforms. I will leave a list here. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we will catch you guys every Monday on our podcast. So excited. Bye. See ya.